Hey, you ready to see the new bike? Let's go see it. All right, this one's a pretty cool one. 1980 Suzuki RM125. Check this thing out. You got the seat in here somewhere. Doesn't look like the original seat cover. There's the seat for it, so. Dual shock in the back. Mostly complete. It does turn over. Tires are actually not too bad on it. Missing the gas cap and the number plate on the front. This cover is like falling off right here. Carbs all there. Everything to start it is there. So, pipe is here. A little loose on there. I don't know what's going on with that. Everything just needs to be gone through. I do have the air box inside as well. But check that thing out. That is an old one. The gas tank was painted. We might try to get that yellow paint off of there. Get it back to the original color. It should be like that orangey color. And then all the plastics are painted too. You can see the pipe was painted. Um, front brake kind of works. Throttle works, that's nice. Rear brake is missing the lever. It's, it looks like it snapped off. But uh, I paid 500 bucks for this thing. And the guy before me said he paid 250 for it a couple days ago and then just did a quick flip on it and sold it to me for 500. And he said he had like hundreds of messages on it. So I was the first one to come that said, when can I pick it up? Everyone else wanted to do trade offers and lowball them, and so that's why I got it. But I figured that was a pretty good deal for All right, little walk around to the bike here. So it looks like the stator cover is like halfway on. So hopefully we can get that back on there. Used the wrong bolt right there. I don't know if this thing runs or not. The guy said he had it running. I, I don't know though. He never started it or rode it around when I bought it. So for all I know, it probably doesn't run. Let's see the neck here. See if it is in fact a uh, 1980. This is RM 125 108503. We'll have to look up and see if that uh, is in fact a 1980. Um, it looks like the engine is different number. It's RM1251089 The guy did have some premix in there, so he was probably trying to start it. It's got red bars on it, looks like they're probably. Oh, here we go. Jeff something. Chromely bars. I don't know what that means. Let me know in the comments if those bars are valuable or not. <laughs> I have no idea. It's mostly here. Everything's just really loose on it. Like somebody was taking it apart and put it back together. The CDI is just kind of sitting here. 
I believe that goes right there on there. I think, or somewhere up here. We'll have to see where that goes. Front tire doesn't look too bad. It's just a little wobbly. Rear wheel bearings. Yeah, it's a little wobbly there. So definitely needs bearings. Let's kick this thing over once here. By hand, just to see what compression's at. Oh, it's pretty low. Sounds a little rattly in there. <laughs> Ooh, a little crunchy in there. So, I guess without further ado, let's start digging into it. See what we find. All right, let's try to get this bolt out of here for the stator cover and get a different size in there so it actually grabs. I don't know how they got that in that far even. There we go. All right, let's see what's behind here. Ooh, that is crusty. Look at that. That had some water in it at one point. It's all corroded, look at that. It's like falling apart. That is crazy. Yeah, I don't know if this is gonna have spark or not. That would be a miracle. Check this thing out. It is rough looking. There's rust everywhere on this thing. If this has spark, I would be very, very surprised. That is really rough looking. Huh. We're gonna keep that cover off for a sec, just to see. There's not much play in the flywheel. That's good, because usually if there'd be a lot of play, the crank bearing would be junk. But that actually doesn't feel that bad, surprisingly. Let's check out the oil. Hopefully there's some oil in it, and hopefully it shifts through the gears. We'll check that after the oil. A little dipstick right here. No, it doesn't look like there's a dipstick on the end of it. Maybe there is. Ooh, oil smells pretty pretty bad. Oh, and the Kickstarter is just coming off. Not even bolted on. Good thing that didn't come off in the ride over. I mean, look how loose that is. We were really lucky that didn't fall off. Wow. All right, let's see if there's any oil in it. Oh, there's oil in it. Looks pretty fresh, too. Looks like somebody did an oil change. Plenty of oil, too. But uh, we'll definitely drain it and take a look after, but at least there's some in there. All right, so we're in neutral right now. First. Second. Third. Fourth. Six. So there are six gears there. That actually shifts really smoothly. So transmission is probably good. Here is the air box for it over here. So somebody must have raced at one point. You can see the holes drilled through it with the screen. Trying to get that horsepower out of it. The air filter is missing. Oh, what's in here? Air filter was just all chewed up, you can see in there. So I'm guessing some of that's in the engine. Looks like a mouse got to it at one point. Something's in here. I'm afraid to look. It's sitting in the air box. Oh. 
So you got the got the footrest and a couple bolts here. The spring. Is it missing one of those? Oh, it looks like it was replaced at one point. So both of them are on there. It must just be a spare. Alright, let's see if this thing has spark now. Looks like a newer spark plug in there. BR9ES plug. All right, here we go, moment of truth. Will it have spark? Looks like it was running with the new plug in there. You can see it was starting to turn a little bit brown. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. I really hope it has spark here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's a little. Cannot believe it has spark. All right. Well, she's got spark. That is hard to believe, but it does. So maybe the guy wasn't lying about it running and starting here. All right, we're gonna get some oil down there just to hear what this thing sounds like with it uh, lubed up. So right now it kind of sounds like the pistons rubbing on the cylinder. Put a little bit of oil down here. And we'll get a compression reading on it as well. Sounds pretty crunchy in there. It's not sounding the greatest. You can kind of hear like the scraping sound. It's like kind of like crunchiness. Almost like the ring is stuck in there kind of. Um, yeah. <laughs> we'll see what compression it's got. I'm assuming not very much. I'm guessing 100 PSI. I don't think it has much more than that. I hope it proves me wrong. But I just have a feeling. All right, so you guys watch this. I will kick it over with the throttle open. See what we get. We're hoping for over 120. That would be pretty decent for an older bike. Just see what we get here. Too bad. Look at that. 1, 10, 20, 30, 140. We did put a little oil down it, so it's probably right around that 120 mark. It's not horrible. Probably needs new rings, but we'll see if she runs today. That would be something. You can see all the black plastics were painted. Let's just say, Cycle AM, must have been the plastic brand, but you can see it was just all painted with crappy paint. Yeah, 
yeah, they're just all painted. You can see the original color coming through right there. It's faded, so I, I get why they painted it, but yeah, look at the gas tank all painted. Oh, and it's cracked right here. I didn't even see that before. Look at that. It's all cracked. That sucks. I wonder if we could plastic weld that. See that how that's all cracked right there? Hmm. Darn. Well, at least it's higher up, so gas won't spill out of it when you're riding it. But hopefully they sell new gas things for it. Front fender is just half on there. Alright, frame looks clean down here. That looks good. pipe is really loose in there you can see it's all wobbly wires are not in the right spot all right I went ahead and tightened every bolt on this thing just to make sure they were all tightened and pretty much everything was loose um, the rear axle nut right here was backed off almost completely so I put a cotter pin in there and got that nice and tight this rod right here was completely detached up here. So I put a new bolt in there. You can see the new nut on there. That was just hanging off right here. So if you went over a bump and that thing got caught, you'd flip over the handlebars. Um, let's see, the CDI was just half on. I bolted it with one bolt right there. I don't know how that would be bolted on um, stock because these brackets don't fit to over there, so I'm wondering if that's not the original CDI. Hopefully it is, otherwise it won't rev out completely. Um, the fender, bolt the back on, that was just super loose on there. And then the front wheel was so loose, that nut right here was backed out all the way. So I put a cotter pin in there, and we got that nice and tight. So all the bolts were pretty much backed out. All the engine bolts seemed loose. So everything is good to go now. I want to quick fix the brake. You can, when you pull the brake in, it does brake, but it doesn't swing back. And I noticed we're missing the spring right down here. So there should be a spring in between here and here so it springs back down. We have to get this little pin out of here. How do you get the spring in there now that I'm looking at it? You can't fit it over it. You might have to just twist it in there. All right, we got the springs on there. We'll see if they're springy enough for us. Let's get this back in. Looks like it's somewhat working here. All right, that appears to be working really well now. All right, let's move on to the clutch here. I'm just gonna take off the whole Clutch arm. I don't think it's doing much. You can see you can push it all the way that way and it just stays there. So this needs to be brought back a little bit.
Let's just see if I can get this out of here. Um, I don't know how you get another nut on there. I don't know if you can. That looks like that's springing back now. Pretty good right there. Well, adjust it later once we get the singer on. All right, let's try to get this carburetor out of here. Looks like there's a clamp on the other side. Try to get that off of here. Should pop right out of here. There we go. Can we go out through this way? Yeah, we can. Alright, this should spin right off of here. There we go. Looks like the slide is in the correct way. We'll cut out towards the intake side of the carb. That off to the side. Let's see if the choke was working. Appeared to be working. So let's start digging into the carb, see what we find there. So it looked like there was some gas in that coming out. That's a good sign. So it looks like it was at least holding gas. Bunch of gas coming out now. Alright, let's see. Oh, geez. Bunch of it came out. There's a lot of gas in there. All right, floats are coming out pretty easily. Ooh, it's pretty gunked up in there. You can see all the gunk at the bottom. Gross. Big chunks. Yeah, the guy said he was riding around the house like that. That's pretty crazy. All that gunk in there. Get that sprayed out. Oh, needles going up and down. Let's see if the uh, the main jet was clogged here. So main jet, we're running so gunked up I can't even see it. Hmm. I can't see what jet number that is, but it is clear.
All right, we'll take out this needle. You can see it's held down by the little spring right here. So we'll just take off that little spring. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky to get off. There we go. Needle should come out. There we go. So there's no rubber tip on this one. Just looks like that. The seat actually looks pretty good in there. Emulsion tube. That's pretty good. We've got the pilot jet in there yet, and then the air screw. There we go. That's gotta be clogged, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, she's clogged pretty good. This one is a 30 pilot. And she is clogged. There's no way that would have started. And then the air screw right on the side right here. See he turns out. One, but one and a half for the air screw there. All right, that's pretty much everything. Choke is working, so I'm gonna have to tear that apart. That gasket right there looks good. Doesn't look like it was leaking or anything. So everything else can just be blown out and uh, sprayed with some carb clean. Come back when that's done. All right, we got the carburetor all cleaned out back on the bike here. I got the air box back on, but uh, obviously it's missing the filter and then the cap for right here. And then it's missing the boot that goes from the carb to the, uh, air box so we really can't connect that up which really sucks because I don't really want to be sucking in sand into the engine but um, yeah we're gonna see if this thing flares up we got the gas tank bolted down and cleaned out we're gonna put some 40 to 1 in there and we'll see if this thing flares up we just have to get a gas line going from the tank to the carb all right we got our clamps here All right, here we go. Will she fire up? Should be interesting. We're gonna choke it, and uh, we might have to spur some gas on the car. We'll see. second kick she fired up. <laughs> she sounds a little rough.
there is no head gasket. Gas is leaking out of the tank right there. Running great, actually. Silencer's a little loud. And it's leaking gas everywhere because of the tank, but other than that, runs pretty good. Top end sounds a little noisy, <laughs> but not horrible for, you know, what it is, 500 bucks. I was uh, expecting a lot worse, so. All right, I used some of this really, really grippy tape to seal up some of the gas tank there, the low spots. So hopefully it doesn't leak gas on the first ride. But uh, let's take a look at the oil next. The drain plug is right there. Looks like it's a 14 millimeter. Of course it's on there, super tight. Oh, there we go. It looks brand new. We'll change it out though. Some people put that cheap uh, car oil in there and then it just makes the clutch slip. So we'll change her out after we get it drained out. Just looking for any metal chunks in there, any metallic flakes. There's not a whole lot in there. Take the cap off. It needs to get some air in there. All right, we'll let the drain out and then add. It says 800 milliliters. All right, she was a little low on oil. Not much in there. But no metallic flakes, no metal chunks. So we're all good there. Looks pretty good. All right, 800 milliliters of the motorcycle 10W40. So this is wet clutch oil. This is not the car oil that makes the wet clutches slip. So you can see that's about how much was in it. So maybe half of it was in it. So it's pretty low. All right, this thing's pretty much as good as it's gonna get at this point until we buy new parts for it. So let's go test drive it, see what she can do.
ride. I'm a 1980 RM125. See how she goes here. Get into neutral. She's been flaring right up. Clutch is not working the greatest. First gear seems pretty good. Front brake is a little iffy. There's third gear. Not too bad. She's running exactly how you would expect this thing to run. <laughs> Feels pretty rattly, you know? It's got good power though. Surprisingly. Little jump. <laughs> Thing's pretty fun. The brake just sucks really bad. She gets up and moves. She's a little boggy in second gear. Made it out to the land. Let's see what this thing can do. It's a nice night for it. Let me go rip up some sand here. this thing warm up for a little bit. Just tried turkey hunting and uh, three big toms walked out here. I was sitting up here and I uh, couldn't get him to come in so I figured why not take a dirt bike ride. They uh, ran into the woods so they're gone for good. It was the last day today so kind of sucks but what can you do? Let's go see if we can scare him out of the woods. What the heck just happened there? Just died on me. Oh, that was weird.
Uh oh. What the heck? I wonder if I pulled the plug. Well, you we can hear this thing rev up really high and just shut off. So I'm thinking it followed the plug because it's just so sporadic sounding. We'll just quick check it. Let's see what the plug looks like. I should have brought more with, knowing that the rings were on their way out here. Totally forgot to bring new plugs. Usually I keep a couple in my car, but I just uh, cleaned it out, so. Maybe it flooded too, who knows. Sounded like something went out though. This park looks pretty wet. Let's see if she's got spark here. Maybe we lost spark or something weird. Let's see, do we have spark? Looks like we do. Oh, we've got spark. Looks pretty good. Wonder if there's too much gas in the cylinder and uh, the compression got too low and now it won't start or that ring finally gave out because spark looks pretty good it's not all sporadic or anything we'll just kick that over a couple times without the spark plug in it with the possibility that it flooded out all right let's see if she fires up here Alright, so I'm checking spark one more time, just because I thought it was weird that I shut off like that again. Thinking like, oh yeah, the spark plug's definitely fouled. But now we don't even have spark. We lost spark. I don't know how that happens, but we lost it. Oh, Alright, so I had this really small spark plug in my truck. And we're getting spark on this thing. Check this out. So I think the plug is definitely fouled out. Because if you look at this one, we're actually getting some spark. It's barely touching in there. It's really weak spark, but we're getting some. And when we put this one back in, What we're gonna do, just for fun, is we're gonna put this tiny plug in and see if it starts up. Here's the difference. Let's just see what happens. For some reason it doesn't like to get tight. There we go. All right, we've got that tiny spark plug in here. Let's just see what happens.
runs better like that than with the big one. What the heck? I cannot believe it runs like that. <laughs> I can't believe it's working. Extreme. Oh, the throttle got stuck there for a sec. <laughs> that was a little sketchy. Takes a while to rev on all the way. You can kind of hear it. Oh boy. We lost her. Well, it fell the plug again, but that little plug actually worked in there for a little bit. Revved out completely and it ran through all the gears with that little guy in there. So, well, for 500 bucks and a little bit of work, we got a running and driving bike. And uh, what more can you ask for? I mean, that's pretty good. So I think next video, we are going to tear into this engine and uh, try to rebuild it. I can find parts for it and get this thing to run properly again. It's close. But uh, I think the rings are worn. So it definitely needs new piston and rings. So that'll be coming up next. But uh, yeah, for 500 bucks, not too bad. I think that was a win. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next video. And until next time, we are out. <laughs>